Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salat wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. So we will begin reading this article by Sheikh Abu Uthman Hafidhullah, and this was published yesterday um, and distributed on social media. So we will read this article, inshallah, and uh, if the Sheikh is able to join us and give any additional commentary uh, or answer any questions about it, then uh, he'll do that. So the title of this article is Mafali Sul Akhira, the bankrupt ones in the hereafter, the bankrupt ones in the hereafter. And let me share the link uh, for this. So I'll put it here in the chat also that anybody wants to get the uh, to grab the Arabic article. Okay, the bankrupt ones in the hereafter. Allah the Most High said, That Allah said we will establish we will establish the scales of justice on Yom al Qiyamah, on the day of resurrection. So no soul will be oppressed in any way, even the amount of a mustard seed. We would bring it. And Allah is sufficient as one to bring to account. The Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Sorry, I just uh, I'm keeping uh, muting somebody that's coming off mute. So please keep your uh, microphones on mute. Thank you. So the Prophet وسلم, said, whoever dies and upon him is a debt of a dinar or a dirham, then that will be taken from his good deeds. Because in the hereafter, there is no dinar and no dirham. And uh, for the brothers that might not know, or the listeners, dinar with dirham, these were the two uh, currencies that were widespread at the time. Uh, dinar was gold and dirham were coins of silver. So the Sheikh continued that our life after death has no dinar or dirham. There is not anything except our good deeds and our bad deeds. There is no wealth to spend. There are no assets to sell. There is not anyone who you can seek a loan from, from those you love. As Allah said, that every person on that day will be busy with their own affair. But there is a repayment after death, a way to repay, and that is your good deeds. So if your good deeds finish to pay back your debts, meaning if, you, if your hasanat or if your good deeds were not sufficient to pay back the debts that you have, then you have become bankrupt. And because of Allah's justice, you will be given the evil deeds or the sins 
of those whom loaned you their wealth, whom you asked them in this worldly life from their wealth, and they gave you a loan out of virtue and out of generosity, and you did not fulfill the right of repaying it. So beware of this. O oh, you person in debt, ask Allah with this dua, with this supplication, in the morning and the evening. And this is the dua, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hammi wal-hazan, wal-ajzi wal-kasal, wal-bukhli wal-juman, wal-dal'i wal rijal O oh Allah, indeed I seek refuge in you from worry and sadness, from inability and laziness, and from being stingy and miserly, and being overcome by debt, and being defeated by men. And the meaning of being overcome by debt in this hadith is having to carry that debt and its weight and its severity upon the heart of the one that's indebted. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that which means, indeed, when a man goes into debt, he speaks and he lies, and he promises and he breaks his promise. So it's necessary that the person in debt that he works hard and he strives sincerely in the night and the day to pay back his debt. So he does not make himself unable to do that or unable to do that. And he's not lazy from implementing the means actually to earn the wealth needed to pay back his debts. And it is necessary to remember for the person who has a debt to remember that death does not free your responsibility from having a debt with Allah the Most High. If, if you had been heedless and lazy while having the ability to pay it back. So from Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, who said, that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that whoever takes, meaning takes a loan from the wealth of the people and he wants and intends to pay it back, then Allah will pay it back for him. And whoever takes a loan intending to waste it, then Allah will waste him. Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah he said in his book, Sahih al-Bukhari, that whoever gives charity while he is in need and his family is in need or upon him is a debt, then indeed repaying the debt is, has more right for him than giving charity or freeing a slave or giving a gift. And these things are rejected back to him. It is not permissible for him to waste the wealth of the people. Paying back a debt is a tremendous affair. So Jabir radiallahu anhu, he said that a dead person, a dead Muslim, was brought to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to be prayed upon, the janazah. So the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked, did he have a debt? So the companions, radiallahu anhum ajma'in, they said, yes, he has a debt of two dinars. So the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, pray upon your companion. So Sheikh Abu Uthman continued by saying, look 
to this question of the Prophet وسلم, specifically. The Messenger of Allah only asked in this situation about debts. And he did not ask وسلم, about anything else. And this is due to the tremendous rights of the creation. So whoever knows that a person, meaning a dead person, had a debt upon him, no. So once, once the Messenger of Allah وسلم, knew that this man, this dead Muslim, had a debt upon him, then he did not pray the janazah over him. And we ask Allah for pardon and safety. And Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Jahsh radiallahu anhu narrated and said that we were sitting with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and he raised his head to the sky and he put the palm of his hand upon his forehead and he said, Subhanallah, what has been sent down from severity? So we remained silent and we were scared. So once it was the next morning, I asked him, I said, O Messenger of Allah, and this is the companion Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Jahsh, he say, I said, O Messenger of Allah, what was this severity that was sent down? So the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, by the one whose hand my soul is in, if a man was killed in the path of Allah and then brought back to life and then killed again and then brought back to life and then killed and upon him was a debt, he would not enter Jannah up until his debt was repaid. O oh, Muslim, your life, and this is Sheikh al Andre Hafizullah, he's continuing. O oh, Muslim, this life is only ours and opportunities. So take advantage of your youth before your old age, and take advantage of your health before you become sick and take advantage of your wealth before you fall into poverty and take advantage of your free time before you are too busy and take advantage of your life before your death and do not be O oh slave of Allah do not be a one someone who is bankrupt in the hereafter the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, do you know who is a muflis, who is bankrupt? So the companions radiallahu anhum, they answered, a bankrupt one among us is who does not have any dirham and he does not have any property. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that indeed the bankrupt one from my ummah is the one who comes on the day of resurrection and he has prayer, he has fasting, he has his zakat, but he comes and in, the, in this worldly life, he had spoken badly towards so-and-so and he has falsely accused so-and-so and he is eaten the wealth of so-and-so and he spilled the blood and hit so-and-so so those people that he oppressed will be given his good deeds and this other one who he oppressed will be given his good deeds and then if that person's good deeds finish before he has repaid and corrected or made just all of those wrongs, then the sins of those people he oppressed 
would be put upon him, and then he would be thrown into the hellfire. Allah the Most High said, وَالَّذِينَ يُذُونَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ بِغَيْرِ مَكْتَسَبُوا فَقَدْ اِحْتَمَلُوا بُحْتَانًا وَإِثْمًا مُبِينًا and those who harm the believing men and the believing women without them having done wrong to deserve that, then indeed upon them, or indeed they have taken upon themselves slander and clear sin. So it is upon the Muslim as a legislated obligation that they always try and free themselves in this worldly life from oppressions that they would have committed, that which is apparent and that which is hidden. And from the examples of that is harming others. And indeed, harming another Muslim is considered a major sin from the major sins. And it is from the paths of becoming bankrupt in the hereafter. And from the tremendous affairs, and we ask Allah for protection, is oppressing and, transgress and transgressing, whether open or hidden, even if it was with a single statement, even if the one who does this is apparently religious. Even if someone is a person of prayer and fasting and giving charity and reciting Quran and having knowledge and worship and obedience, just like the Messenger of Allah وسلم, clarified, as Abu Hurairah anhu narrated, I heard the Messenger of Allah وسلم, say, there were two men from Bani Israel, and they were like brothers. And one of them, he used to sin, and the other one used to strive in doing worship. And it would always be that the one who would strive in worship would see the other one upon sin, and he would say, stop. And he found him one day upon a sin, doing, committing his sin. So he said to him, stop. So the one who was committing the sin replied to him and said, leave me with my Lord. Have you been sent as a watcher over me? So the one who, was, who used to strive in worship, he said, by Allah, by Allah, Allah will not forgive you. He will, that Allah will not enter you into Jannah. So then both of their souls were taken and they were brought before the Lord of all the creation. And Allah said to the one who used to strive, do you have full knowledge of me? Or do you have ability to control my hand? So the sinner said, and, and then Allah said to the sinner, go and enter Jannah by my mercy. And he said to the other one, take him to the hellfire. So Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu said, by the one whose hand my soul is in, Indeed, a single statement can corrupt the world. His, indeed, the single statement had corrupted his worldly life and his hereafter. And likewise, look to this tremendous lesson from the questions that the companions, radiallahu anhum, those who were the carriers of this religion from the mouth of the Prophet Sallallahu Look to the lessons of when they asked the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu in this hadith from Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu that he said, 
it was said to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "O Messenger of Allah, indeed, such and such woman prays in the night, and she fasts in the day, and she does so many good deeds for Allah, so many acts of worship, and she gives in charity, but." She harms her neighbors with her tongue. So the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam answered their question by saying, "There is no good in her; she is from the people of the hellfire." And then the companions, radiallahu anhum, they said, "And such and such woman, she prays her obligatory prayers, and she gives charity." with a small amount. And she does not harm anyone. So the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said about her, she is from the people of Jannah. From the wisdom of the companions, uh, radiallahu anhum, in their understanding the religion, in seeking to understand the religion for themselves and for the ummah of Islam after them, is their questioning, radiallahu anhum, of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, about the situation of these two women. The harmful woman who was a person of worship and the other woman who was conservative in her worship, meaning she did not have a lot of voluntary worship, who did not used to harm anyone. So the companions, radiallahu anhum, they looked at this tremendous affair from that which is required from the sharia and the religion and the rights of mankind. And the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, block your harm from the people, for indeed that is charity from you upon yourself. And I'll repeat that. Block your, that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, block your own harm from the people, because indeed that is charity that you are giving yourself. Allah the Most High said, Al-yawma tujza kullu nafsim bima kasabat, la zulm al-yawma inna allaha surriyu al-hisab. Allah the Most High said, about the day of resurrection, He said, today, Every soul will be rewarded for what they have earned. There is no oppression today. Indeed, Allah is fast at holding to account. None. And that's the end of the article written by uh, Sheikh Abu Uthman. And inshallah, if he joins us, Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Kaifal hal shaykh. Wa marhaban. 
اهلا وسهلا تفضل نعم شيخ we've just finished uh, reading the article and um, they'd love to hear from uh, any additional comments that you have inshallah بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم احييكم بتحيه الاسلام السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته هنا بيان لخطر من يكون في هذه الدنيا بطريق المفاليس وهو لا يدري سواء كان ممن يعتدي على الناس أو ممن وصفه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في حديثه عندما سأل الصحابة من المفلس فالإنسان يجب أن يكون حذرا في هذه الدنيا فما هذه الدنيا إلا ساعات وفرص يغتنيها الإنسان لسلامته في الآخرة والإنسان يجب أن يعلم أن مثقال ذرة من خير أو شر فهي في ميزانه يوم القيامة ولذلك يجب أن يعلم أن مدار الأمر في الآخرة بين الحسنات والسيئات هذا ملخص المقال وإذا كان هناك من الأخوة سؤال فليتفضل مشكورا جزاكم الله خيرا شيخ so uh, the sheikh said as a summary of what was what has come in this article is a warning against living our lives and being in this life as a muflis, as someone who would be bankrupt in the hereafter. So we need to strive to protect ourselves from those affairs that would make us be muflisin, be from these bankrupt ones in the hereafter, from the examples of harming people, not giving them their rights, which are owed to them, and what has come in the hadith that we read when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Men al-Muflis, who is the bankrupt one? So this life, this worldly life, it is only hours. It's a short time that we have to live in and we have to utilize the opportunities to make sure that our hereafter is right. Because in the hereafter, there is no wealth to spend, to repay back anything. All we have is our good deeds and our bad deeds. And that's what we need to remember and remind ourselves so that we can be safe from being in that situation of being muflis or being bankrupt in the hereafter. And the Sheikh had said, if anyone has any questions, about, um, we'll start inshallah with uh, what has come on the topic, if anyone has any specific questions. Um, so first, Sheikh, somebody said, uh, what if your intention was striving to pay back the debt and you die? Will it still apply? In kunta sadiqan, in kunta sadiqan, jaddan, بذلت الأسباب ولم تكن مماطلا أو مهملا وأنت قادر فأسأل الله أن يكرمك بالإيفاء والله أعلم نعم so the sheikh answered that if you are actually striving you're actually sincere in paying back your debt to the best of your abilities, that you're actually working hard to do that, that you are not being lazy, that you are not being careless about the issue, and you are truly being sincere in trying your best to pay back the debt, then he asks Allah and he hopes that Allah 
would pay back the debt for you or settle the debt for you in the hereafter if you are striving to pay it back as was described. Now, uh, we have a question from, um, I'll try and go in order of the hands that were raised. So, uh, Brother Muhammad Mohsen. Yes, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. Sheikh, my question is regarding uh, fasting. And my wife gave birth at the beginning of last Ramadan. And she couldn't fast because of nifas, postpartum bleeding. And I want to know what is the Islamic ruling on making up the missed fast? Do we, does she have to give fitya or does she need to make up before the coming Ramadan or do both? Because she is currently she, she need to She need to fast. She need to fast. Now. She, she is breastfeeding at the moment. And she will breastfeed for two years. Uh -huh. If she, if she is in this condition, she wait until she finish, and then she will fast for this days, which you mentioned about. It. Okay. In the end of Ramadan, or as you mentioned. Okay, sir. Sure. Understood. Only, only fasting, right? Only fast, no fidya. Yes. Okay, sure. yes. Okay. Jazakallah khairan, Sheikh. Jazakallah khair. Jade, fadl uh, Abu Sual. Assalamu alaikum. Like Mustaam. Like Mustaam, rahmatullah. My question was about student loan debt. If I encourage student loan debts uh, out of ignorance of this legislation, uh, and and I'm actively trying to, to to pay it back. Is it permissible for me to give charity, or should I just continue to pay on the on the student no. loan debt? As I mentioned in the article, I mentioned uh, Al Imam Al Bukhari what he said clearly. You don't supposed to do anything. Just work hard to to close the loan which you got am i clear no. in this that's why no. i mentioned what Al imam al-bukhari mentioned in his uh, sahih al-bukhari in his book i believe uh, did you hear it or not no yes i heard it shake yes jazakallah khair so this is the answer, as Al Bukhari said, Rahimahullah. Thank you, Fadl uh, Bilal John Paul. Yes, alaykum wa rahmatullah. Alaykum salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Inshallah, I just have a comment and I have a question, Sheikh. If that's okay, go ahead. I uh, I just want to say Jazakallah khairan for all the classes that you're having with us. They are of tremendous benefit for us here in America. Um, my question is, if you have a debt with someone and you cannot find the person that you owe the money to, what is the legislation of what is to be done? Thank you, brother. Regarding the answer of your question, can Adam, you clarify it for me, please? Translate it. No, I'm sure you call either can I lay he dane he worked hard to find the person no, as he, he can. Up. Don't give up. But if you couldn't find it in the end, you can give somebody after you do all your effort in it. You give it as a sadaqah for him. It will be in his mizan. Wassallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mizan kedaik. Naam. Akhlaq khair. Zakallah khair. Thank you, brother. Akum. Fadl Ace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu Yes, I'm not trying to bother y'all with um, uh, prison situation. 
but basically they allow us to grow our beards here in prison. It's been legislated, it's in the handbook. But as of last week, the um, officers come around, they're like, hey, you guys are gonna be forced to shave your beards. And so all of the Muslims were like, nah, we're not because you know it's in the handbook that we're legislated to be able to grow beards as well as you know it's a major part of the sun, it's a major sin. And so I'm aware that out of necessity for compulsion that is permissible, but a lot of the brothers they're still like, we don't they don't really want to do it. So how should I advise them? Inshallah. Fadl Adam. No, uh, just to clarify, brother, you said uh, the guards, you saying the official rules is that it's it's permissible to grow the beard in jail officially. Yes, sir. And, and the guards um, told you that you're going to have to start shaving. Well, they said just this one time because of security reasons, somebody mm -hmm. did something, escaped or something. So they want updated pictures of us without beards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's like an official order from the 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 uh, the administration, or is it just something the guards I, might be saying? Yeah, I, I, yeah, exactly. I haven't seen it in writing or anything. Right mm -hmm. now, it's just what they're telling us, but I haven't seen it in writing. No, uh, Sheikh Yakul, Dakhil uh, Sujun, Al Asal, and who Masmuh and. Uh, 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 أن تطلبوا من إدارة السجن أن لا يصنعوا ذلك تكتبون رسالة وتقولون هذا من واجباتنا الدينية شرعا في ديننا وعقيدتنا فإن وافقوا فبها وإلا فقد أديتم الذي عليكم نعم نعم The last answer. So regarding the question about uh, the brothers who might be requested to shave their beard uh, while in prison, then the Sheikh advised that they should try their best to approach the, the administration uh, about the topic. So they should prepare a letter explaining that this is from what they uh, have in their, uh, from the obligations of their religion and from their beliefs that they should grow their beards and they should put that forward to the administration. If the administration agrees and uh, allows them to keep their beards, then Alhamdulillah, they did what they could uh, to achieve that. And if the administration denies it and uh, forces them that they have to shave, then they have done what they could do to the best of their abilities to try to try and prevent that situation. No. Okay. Um, if you'd like, uh, Sheikh, I'm, I'm guessing maybe he might not rejoin us because of the, uh, it's very close to Maghrib uh, for him in Kuwait. So um, if I can help you with any question uh, specific to the lesson, we could try and do that. And then uh, Sheikh could take over inshallah once he arrives. So um, uh, Yusuf, did you have any question about the lesson or? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yeah, regarding, uh, regarding on the same topic, suppose if you speak bad about uh, some, someone or curse someone in his absence, so what is the rectification not to have bankrupt in the Akira? 
Mm-hmm. Right. So it's, oh, okay. right. So you can look. Uh, the one angle is looking at the benefits and harms of uh, rectifying the situation with that person. So some people, if you go and tell them what you said and apologize. Uh, maybe it would be beneficial for your relationship because you're apologizing to them and you're making it better. But if they never knew you spoke bad about them, there's a chance that that could harm the, the relationship even more, right? So you should definitely try your best to praise that person when you're able to and anybody that you told them that you, anybody that you had spread that speech to, you know, that you, if you said some things to... Uh, anyone about someone else, then you should try your best to clarify to them that you were wrong and that you're taking it back and things like that to the best of your ability. Okay, so, so that in the Akira, Allah, we, we are not going to be questionable, you mean, right? Uh, well, this is something that we have to be careful of as far as speaking about what Allah will or won't do. You know, this isn't our right to say what Allah will or won't do, just as in the hadith of the article. We can't yeah. say Allah will forgive somebody or won't forgive somebody. So it goes back to you know what we hope that we strive to do the best that we possibly can in this worldly life, and we hope uh, for the best end result by Allah's mercy and justice. Yeah. Do you have any uh, dua specific dua? I mean, in such cases, uh, to ask forgiveness or anything. Um, well, oft, yeah, often when Sheikh Abu Uthman is asked about that, he mentions the tremendous hadith of the du'a, which is called Sayyidul Istighfar. Okay. Yeah, so this is something that you should say in the morning and evening, and that's, okay. uh, you know, from the best ways. Zaglaqe. Okay. Uh, Jade, uh, Abdul Mubin? And crew? Um, <laughs> so, uh, our que my question was building upon the question and the answer given by Sheikh Anjiri on the question by uh, Brother Bilal on which Sheikh advice to give charity on behalf of the person whom you owe, uh, who, who, whom you are under debt with, and you can't find that person. What if, in, in case that person is not a Muslim, how do we go about in that situation? Mm. Yeah, Allah knows best. I don't know. Okay. All right. Jazakallah khair. Do you have that? Do you have that, uh, brother? Just do you have that problem, or is it just a what if? No, I think <laughs> I, I do I have um, early in the days of ignorance, but uh -huh. yeah, he had, he had 10 15 rupees debt <laughs> with his school. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's keep it on track with the uh, you know with, with the real real situations. Uh, you know, especially in these, the times of social media, uh, you know, the, Allah has made it easier, much, much easier to find people that we thought yeah. we couldn't find before. Yeah, so, uh, you know, it, it might happen, yes, that you can't find somebody, but, but usually there's ways to find somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody. Thank you so much. Allah knows best. Salaam. Uh, Anwar, you had your hand up? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa rahmatullah. Uh, okay, I have, I have two questions. One is this article which was shared by uh, Sheikh. Is it is it uh, a translation available so that we can share with our family, friends, and relatives for them to get the benefit as well? You say this uh, this this article? Yeah, the one which you okay. I mean, for which we are uh, you know the reading out the share basically. Right. Yeah, so uh, I translated it now, and sometimes uh, some of the brothers, Jazal Malo Karen, they uh, go and do a transcription of that translation. So that's something that might become available, uh, inshallah. Yeah. But uh, you know, but feel free to share the the audio recording if you'd like uh, for now until you have the written one. Inshallah. Uh, the other question is, uh, um, since this uh, this great benefit was shared, of course, it really scares us. But then if there is anything that, you know, we have, we have that, but, you know, we forgot or we have forgotten that there is or uh, we really don't know at the, the time of ignorance or when we are young. Um, so in that situation, what to do? Like, we don't even know that we, we may have it, but we don't know whom it was with. And then, you know, 
So what is, I mean, although our intention was to repay, but then if you've forgotten it and we don't know exactly how much it is and with whom, uh, can we just ask Allah for forgiveness? And, yeah, it's, uh, uh, yeah, that goes back to just like anything else that you might have forgotten or, or been mistaken in. If you refer back to the end of Surah Al-Baqarah, Rabbana la tu'akhidna in nasina o akhtatna. That the believers ask Allah, O oh Allah, do not hold us to account if we have uh, forgotten or made a mistake. Uh, so this is something that, uh, you know, Allah is from his mercy and kindness and generosity. He doesn't hold us to account for those things which we have truly uh, forgotten or, or truly made a mistake in while doing our best to be upon that which is correct. Alhamdulillah. Wayakum. Uh further Fadl uh, sorry, uh uh Sayed, is that your name? Sayed. You still with us? Sayed uh, Sajad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So I have one general question. It's regarding what is the ruling if any woman want to separate her from her marriage since he want to uh, get away from the marriage what is the procedure for halala yeah that's going to be a, a complicated uh compli it's a com yeah. because the co situation is yeah. complicated complicated answer so yeah yeah uh, so let me see time if, permits yeah let me see yeah, if yeah. i can find so we can find something uh to help you with that uh, afterwards okay yeah, not an issue. Okay. Uh, two weeks ago, I went for Umrah with my family. Mm -hmm. And my wife, uh, she was uh, purchasing some items on the in Haram. So during the purchase, she hold those items. And then the policeman came and the seller ran away. So she hold those, those items. She... she she could not uh, pay back the money, actually. The seller so ran away? He ran away by seeing the police. <laughs> so we have the things with us. We don't know what to do. We want to pay and we try to find him, but we could not able to find him. So then uh, our, uh, uh, I mean, we left uh, Haram. So now my question is, uh, how should I, I mean, uh, 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 how can I uh, rectify? I mean... I don't know, brother. That's uh, I don't know. It's it sounds like he gave them to you, but Allah knows best. Yeah, I don't I don't know that you have to do anything with them. Oh, okay. Allah knows best. Yeah. Okay. Zakalake. Wayakum. Wayakum. Okay. That's all the the hands up. Take care, brothers. Uh, hopefully, we'll continue next week. Inshallah. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.